It is our pleasure, and each year, as you know, we have um, usually a State of the City address. And it's our pleasure this year to have our newest mayor, Nancy Backus, come to give us an update, not necessarily about the past, but the future. Please help me welcome Mayor Nancy Backus. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. So, Byron, we are going to try new things in Auburn. One of those is we have a female mayor. <laughs> We're trying new things in Auburn. And I am going to attempt to give this on my iPad today. So I'd, I'd like to begin first by thanking you for being here today and thank Nancy and Byron for offering me this opportunity to come and talk with all of you about the city that I love. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. You probably know, but I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a soccer mom. I'm a friend, I'm a confidant, and I'm a professional businesswoman. I've worked since I was 12 years old and I was the first female box boy at Piggly Wiggly up on the hill. <laughs> For those of you that have been around a while, you know Pig Hill, right? If you haven't been around very long, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm a proud product of the Auburn School District. I'm a graduate of Green River Community College, and I hold a Bachelor of Science in Accounting. I was a member of the Auburn City Council from July 2003 to December of 2013, and I have been your mayor for exactly 49 days. <laughs> I'm probably the shortest mayor that's ever been here, too. And let me tell you, around the office last week, everybody got their jollies by saying, we're bringing a step stool for you, uh, we'll bring another podium that's lower. All it takes is a pair of heels. <laughs> I don't like politics, and I don't like being referred to as a politician. In today's climate, that word connotates a person, uh, it's a negative connotation. It's a person who engages in politics for their party's benefit or one's own advantage. I think you probably understand why I don't like to be categorized as that's such a person. I think Fianella, or Henry LaGuardia, New York mayor from 1934 to 1945 stated it best. There is no democratic or republican way of cleaning the streets. Pretty simple concept. Clearly we just need to get it done. It's not about political parties. Uh, when I worked for Boeing and I was in the benefits department, we did audited financial statements. And so every year we would get the green auditors, because nobody wanted to do the or nobody wanted to do the audits for the financial statements for uh, benefit plans, and so I used to joke with them and say, "What does it feel like to be hated by someone before they even know you?" For those of you that are auditors, you probably or CPAs, you probably understand that. And now I kind of feel that same way. You know, there are going to be people around that don't like me because of who I am before they get to know me. That's okay. My goal is to make you understand why I have such a passion for what I'm doing. I have absolutely no plans to go anywhere else after my time as your mayor is complete. Auburn's it for me. It's for me because local government is really the best place to make a positive difference for people. Local government will affect a person's day-to-day -day life more than any other level. Thankfully, the elected offices in Auburn are nonpartisan. We don't have a party to answer to. We only have to answer to the people of Auburn. Plain and simple, and that's why I'm here. And that's why your seven city council members do the great work that they do. I am so honored to be able to work with those seven council members. I was one of them until just a month and a half ago and it's, it can be a difficult transition to go from being on the legislative side to the executive side. But I'll tell you, the council that I get to work with, your council, have been most gracious 
and they are helping me through this process. And I appreciate each one of you for the gifts that you share with the city and the time that you devote, much more time than probably most people in this room realize. So thank you, each one of you. <clears throat> thought for a long time about what the state of the city speech should be. In fact, last year as I sat listening to Mayor Lewis thinking, gosh, I hope I get the chance to do this next year. And I did! <laughs> it's my first one as your mayor, and it's really important to me. So I wondered, what do you want to hear from me? What's the message that I can deliver? And in a nutshell, I'll tell you this, I love this city and my goal is to lead the government into the 21st century. The author, Benjamin Barber, spoke last year and basically said that mayors should rule the world. <laughs> I think that's a pretty extreme statement, but uh, what he said did reinforce my belief that local government is the example by which all levels of government should function. But they don't. He said that cities are the political institutions in which cultures are born. Cities are the cradle of democracy. Cities are not only the oldest of institutions, they are the most enduring. They are the places where we are born, grow up, we are educated, we work, marry, pray, play, get old, and in time we die. Cities are home. Barbara also asserted that the nation and states govern from a very different place and oftentimes without us. And I think at times it can certainly feel that way. And you know, even in Auburn, there are times that it could feel like that as well. And that's my message for you today. We're going to change what your local government feels like. And that's why I started to do on January 1 and I'm going to be asking for your help to continue my quest to disrupt the status quo. No longer should our local government do business the way it's always been done. And clearly, we haven't done everything poorly up to this point. That's not what I'm saying. We've done some incredibly great things in our nearly 123 year history. We've built railroads and roads bridges and buildings, commerce and business, schools and churches. We've created a culture in Auburn that at its core is a genuine desire to help each other and lift those in need. And we've grown into the 14th largest city by population in a, in a state of 281 cities. I'd say we've done pretty well to this point. But now, it's time to do better so we can all be better, each and every one of us. I'm going to tell you what I hope we can do together, and I want you to hold me accountable for every word as I will hold you accountable to yours. Next year when I stand here again to speak with you, I think together we can be proud of what we have accomplished. First, let's start with the current state of the city of Auburn. At the moment, we are emerging from an economic downturn. Now, this isn't news to any of you in the room, I know. What might be interesting for you to note is that your city is poised for growth. During my time on the city council, we ensured that we could weather this storm, and we have. We are financially strong. We have qualified and passionate staff. We have a great team, and they're ready, and we have recently reorganized some of our most important customer service functions so that the business we, are go we do going forward is of the highest level. Your police force is continuing to grow. We added three more police officers a little over a week ago, and I intend to continue to find sustainable funding to add even more, because you deserve it. My goal, my goal is to grow our workforce with more boots on the ground for the protection of our citizens. The cultural art community is thriving in Auburn. Parks, arts, and recreation offers a vast array of opportunities, including the Bravo series, comedy at the Ave, and various classes to bring out the artist in all of us. 
We have a downtown sculptor gallery that was partially funded through local revitalization financing funding that we received from the state of Washington and also for culture King County lodging tax. If you want to play, we have our award-winning festivals, concert series, one of the best municipal golf courses in the area. 20, yeah. <laughs> yes. 28 developed parks, over 23 miles of trails, almost 247 acres of open space for passive and active recreation, and athletic and recreational activities for all ages. We are home to Emerald Downs, the Outlet Collection, Green River Community College, the White River Amphitheater, a hometown symphony orchestra that is second to none, casinos, and we share our city with the Muckleshoot Indian tribe. Two of my biggest concerns for our city right now are ensuring that the most vulnerable of us are safe, fed, and have a roof over their head, and how to fill the gaps in funding from the decisions above us that have reduced or removed finances from our local budget. First, the underserved. We have a significant number of brothers and sisters in Auburn that are struggling. Some are long-term. Some have been the victims of a poor economy. But regardless of the reason, if there are children without food, elderly without homes, or veterans unable to receive service, it's just flat out unacceptable. As Mayor Lewis has said in the past, it is not a crime to be poor. I don't have all the answers to the problems, but I do know that there are angels in our midst that are answering that call. The Auburn Food Bank, Auburn Youth Resources, Valley Cities, and Pregnancy Aid, to name just a few. Some of the funding for these organizations come from the commitment of your Auburn City Council, but it's not enough. It's never enough. As I helped with the Firefighter Local 1352 Toy Drive and Auburn Food Bank's Christmas Basket distribution in December, I saw the generous and compassionate nature of those helping to serve, but also the look of hope and appreciation in the eyes of those being served. Together, I believe we can and will do more. Secondly, to fill our funding gaps. Since 1996, the City of Auburn budget has seen cumulative losses of about 51 million through legislative and initiative action. $51 million. Some examples of those losses include the streamlined sales tax, repeal of the motor vehicle excise tax, property tax limitations, and the loss of the liquor sales excise tax. Whether it was realized beforehand or not, when the state and federal government change the rules or the voters appro approve certain initiatives, the result is clearly always the same. Less money means less service. The most visible result in Auburn is our roads and our transportation system. This is the most expensive service that your government provides. This again is a problem for which no one person has a solution. I could stand here and explain the economics of your local government. I can try to make a plea that it's the cost of doing business. There's a lot of things I could say, but it would not solve the problem. It's always about choices. If we spend money on A, then we have to spend less on B. It's all about those choices. And each choice has a benefit and a consequence. My point is that there's no easy answer. And anyone that tells you that is probably going to lie to you about other things as well. So where are we going? Likely there really isn't much I've talked about that was news to any of you, I hope. Uh, just because Auburn has a new mayor doesn't mean the challenges that faced the previous administration went away or that the growth Auburn has made as a community will lessen. They're just mine to deal with now. Mayors are known to be problem solvers. We have to be. We can't afford to be paralyzed by a party issue or simply fail to act. If we do, people suffer. Our cities suffer. And from my perspective, that's just simply not an option. I get the luxury of immediate feedback. Whether I want it or not, I get it. Whether it's at the grocery store with my daughter. In fact, one day she bet me on how many people were going to stop me and talk to me about issues in the store. 
This was probably a week after I took office. And I said, Lucky, nobody's going to stop me. Come on, we're just in here for a few minutes, get a few things, and we'll head out. Mom, I bet there are five. Well, before we left, four people had approached me. And one of them approached me a second time. So Lucky called that a victory. I'm <laughs> counting that guy as the fifth. Never forget to listen to your kids. <laughs> You know, whether it's at that grocery store, or I'm at one of Lucky's soccer games, I'm in a restaurant, or with Facebook, oh yeah, there is immediate feedback with Facebook. And I love it. Uh, whether we're moving in the right direction or not, we need to make uh, a change. And it's good to hear when we're making the right decisions, but it's also really important to me when you feel we're moving in the wrong direction, so we can correct. Your city guarantees you that we'll provide you with clean drinking water, roads, functional sewer system, public safety, and if we do all those things right, we'll also provide parks and amenities that will make sure that your city feels like home. So, what about the idea of disrupting the status quo? What I mean is that together, you and I are going to change the culture of City Hall. We're going to do away with the old ways of doing business. We're going to change the way we deliver services. Some of the culture change may not be immediately visible because we have some work to do at City Hall to redefine the attitude in our government. The first order of business is to make sure every one of our nearly 400 employees understands what RAA is. This is something that I'm bringing with me from, from my former life at Boeing. RAA, responsibility, accountability, and authority. And if we're going to give you the responsibility, and we're going to give you the accountability, then we darn well better give you the authority to get the job done. Otherwise, how can we expect you to succeed? We can't. So you'll find at City Hall, and all of the employees that work in the city are going to have the RAA. If we ask them to complete something, we're going to give them the ability to get it done without me inserting myself in the middle of it, to be a bottleneck. We hire great people. I just need to get out of the way and let them get the job done. That's my commitment to you. I encourage our team to also have fun at work. Hopefully uh, proven by some of the Blue Fridays that we had recently, Dana, should I do a shameless Go Seahawks plug right here? I should. Go Seahawks! So we did Blue Fridays, and then the, set, the Friday right before the Super Bowl, we had a great big tailgate party. Our firefighters came out to cook hot dogs. Our police officers brought, wait for it, donuts. <laughs> and they also brought chili. And the fire department, and thank you, Brent, for allowing this, they brought the ladder truck, and we proudly flew the 12th man flag. Now, that didn't cost us really anything to do. But it got some employees together that maybe didn't know each other. We even had some folks come in on their day off. It was their flex day. But they wanted to be part of something fun that we were doing as a team. And we will continue to do those things because building the team is going to be better ultimately for each and every one of you. And it doesn't mean that we don't take our jobs seriously, because we do. But we're with the people we work with more than anyone else in our lives, more waking hours than anywhere else. So if we can't have some fun along the way, then we're doing something wrong. And again, I, hold, I expect you to hold me to that commitment. I've been meeting with all of our teams to get to know them better and for them to get to know me. I found so many examples of pride and dedication. Last week, I attended one of the staff meetings for the turf team out at the golf course. Each one of them talked about pride in their work. They care about each other and they care about our city. And clearly they care about that golf course. Kevin Van and his team designed and built the beautiful waterfall that you see from the clubhouse. How many of you have seen that? That was done by our own team. 
And when it was time for that clubhouse to be built, that same team went out and did a considerable amount of work before the, um, before the builders got out there. That saved our city incredible amounts of money because they cared enough to do that and they wanted to be a part of it. That's what I'm talking about. We have incredible people. There are things we'll deliver to you that will ultimately provide you with the kind of service from your local government and those are owed to you. First, the City of Auburn will provide more transparency through technology. We've made a start and I am seeking ways to do more and I'm listening to the experts. Your IT department has continued to add services to what we call our virtual city hall. There are tools that can help you do business with your city more conveniently and more efficiently for all of us. We're also looking at more ways to help citizens find information. I'm aware <laughs> that finding data can be very difficult and we as your government should decrease that difficulty as much as we possibly can. Everything needs to be user friendly and we're striving for that. It's your information and you deserve to have access to it without bureaucracy. Two, we will increase citizen engagement through non-traditional means. We know that technology can be a great equalizer. We can create or utilize more innovative online citizen engagement tools and we can continue to find ways to increase access to your local government so that we can hear your voice. I believe a quick response is critical. Even if it's simply, I'll get back to you, and then we must get back to you. And that's what's to be expected. We recently seated our first Auburn Junior City Council. Your city council and I are very excited to have an active and imaginative group of young people providing us feedback and I hope you will all continue to support them. They're a brilliant group. We'll also continue to be out in your neighborhoods. We want to talk to you where you are. We want to hear what your neighborhood or your business has to say, and we want to hear you often. And this is timely. Auburn is in the midst of our visioning process related to our comprehensive plan. This is the perfect opportunity for you to help shape Auburn's future. I encourage you to make your opinions heard during our Imagine Auburn process. It's easy online. Go ahead and take the survey. It's very quick, maybe five minutes, and it provides you with an opportunity to help us determine your vision, help you determine our vision. I also want to break down the traditional ways that government does business. Good old boys. Some of you may have heard me described as a good old boy during the campaign. I am not old. <laughs> and I'm not a boy. We've recently made some changes to our structure, as I mentioned before. We've merged our planning and public works functions, and so they're closely related and important to our upcoming development. We're trying to streamline those processes for you. We will not cut corners, but we will find more efficient and effective ways to get the job done. We will be a disruptor of the status quo. We need to hear what the citizens' priorities are, not tell them what our priorities are. We will require that staff stop defending when we are asked a question. Instead, let's ask the citizen what they would do. How would you like to see this resolved? We'll drop the defensive and stop fighting and absolutely never, ever, ever allow the first answer to be no. We've decided that the way we have historically done business is dead. We will continue to develop more public-private partnerships and let this be our entry into the 21st century government. I came from the private sector and I believe that we should expect our government to form more effectively and more efficiently. Auburn has some exciting opportunities ahead. We have the attention of those looking to locate their business in our city, as well as those looking to move their families here. The next few years will bring much change to our downtown, as well as to other areas within the city. Now, will that mean some growing pains? Oh yes, my friends, there will be some growing pains. 
Auburn is over 120 years old, and the one constant during that entire time has been change. It is imperative, however, that we're excited with new development. We must never forget existing businesses. I've been using the phrase, dance with the one that brought you. That's what you all are. You're the ones that brought our city through the depression, or the recession. You've helped us through some of the most difficult of times, and you deserve some of our focus. And we will be making more of a focused effort on helping you and your businesses as well, not just attracting the new. We're a diverse community. Our focus of One Auburn is set to celebrate not only our similarities, but our differences. We will continue to find opportunities to bring people together and learn from each other. We are always going to be better together than trying to make it on our own. We partner with the Auburn School District, Green River Community College, the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe, the Auburn Area Chamber of Commerce, and numerous regional and national organizations to ensure that we are doing the right thing for our citizens. We have a proud history of helping our veterans, too. Veterans and their families have long been a priority of service and recognition in Auburn. Though I'm not a veteran, my daddy was a World War II veteran, and I have a cousin who served four tours of duty in Vietnam. I have the utmost respect for our servicemen and women in this country. We have one of the largest, if not the largest, Veterans Day parades west of the Mississippi, and a Veterans Memorial Park that helps us to remember and honor their sacrifice. We will continue to work to create resources that open up housing, jobs, education, and assistance, and remain dedicated to the establishment of a Veterans and Human Services Center to provide resources to our most vulnerable residents. My hope is that when you think of Auburn, you think of your home with pride. Webster's Dictionary defines home as the place, such as a house or apartment, where a person lives. A family living together in one building, a house, etc., or a place where something normally or naturally lives or is located. A home is so much more than what you can get out of a definition in a dictionary. Every city has opportunities to do better. Home should bring to mind a place of comfort, a place of security, and a sense of opportunity. Auburn can do better, but there's so much goodness too. We have grown from a sleepy little town of 12,000 back in the late 60s when my family came to Auburn to a city of regional significance with approximately 74,000 people this year. Your city government is here to serve you. My door is always open, and I look forward to the opportunity to meet with you. I am proud of our city. I am proud of the work that we have accomplished, and I am thrilled with the opportunities that lie in front of us. One year from now, let's meet back here again and recap what we've accomplished together. To disrupt the status quo, we must have an open heart to inspire and encourage. An open will, we must be willing to take risk and make bold steps, and an open mind, we must constantly learn and grow. I want to thank each one of you for allowing me to realize my dream of being your mayor and for serving each and every one of you each and every day. Thank you.